Hey everyone, my name is Jose Kejo Engineer. Thank you for joining me. Um, today we're going to cover uh, the replacement of the power window regulator and motor on uh, 1983 air-cooled Porsche 911. Uh, this repair should apply to uh, air-cooled 911s from 1974 to 1989. Um, however, specifically, we'll be working on a 1983 model. And uh, basically, if you have power windows and you have either a window that goes up in one direction and really, really slowly or not very well in the other direction, doesn't work at all, um, or you have stuff rattling in the door um, every time you go over bumps, then it may be time to uh, service or replace your window regulator um, and or the motor. What we're gonna do today is attempt to remove both pieces so that you can inspect them. And then at that point, either decide, make your own judgment whether you want to replace them with new ones or if you want to go ahead and service yours, clean them up, uh, repair, uh, some damage and then uh, ins install them back in. Uh, in my particular case, I had my driver's side door completely taken apart because I have a lot of issues going on in there. I had a door stay that uh, was not working and the door would swing out and, you know, just swing out as far as it could. That's no longer the case. And uh, as long as I'm inside the guts of the door, I discovered a little little bit sitting at the bottom of the door, which is a part of the window regulator. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and take it out, uh, inspect it, determine if I can just do a repair um, and then put it back in. Otherwise we may have to replace the entire unit, but uh, please follow along if you'd like to learn how to do this process. Um, if at the end of the video, this helps you in any way, Please, I would appreciate it very much if you uh, like and subscribe. I'm trying to grow this channel. Um, you know, it's very, very small right now, but um, again, uh, I'm going through almost an entire restoration of the, all the mechanical parts of my 83 SC, and I'm gonna document as many of them as I can on this channel so that hopefully uh, this can help you out during uh, all of your uh, garage repairs. So let's get started. So this is my driver's side door with the um, door card and all the hardware stripped off so that we have access to the uh, lock mechanism and the window uh, regulator and motor. In order to get to this step, I'll show you a step-by-step -step process on how to strip the door uh, using my passenger side door. And the reason why I'm going to do that is that my driver's side door panel was kind of a mess to begin with. So, uh, you know, it had a missing door pocket and um, yeah, it had some serious problems. So it's better uh, to describe it using this door. So the first thing you want to do to strip down a door panel is, is to remove this top trim. The top trim has a screw on each end. If you remove this little plastic cap, there is a screw in here. If you remove, actually, there is another screw in here. And then once you remove those two screws, then you will be able to remove the top trim on the passenger side. The driver's side will have the, the, little, the little joystick that you use to adjust the power mirrors, and it has a little round bezel in here. You, it has two holes in it, so you can take a, a pair of snap ring pliers or two sharp picks and spin it counterclockwise and then you should be able to spin the bezel off and then the the joystick will be free 
And then you can take this top trim and pick it up off of the door and set it aside. The next thing you will want to do is to remove the door pocket and the lid. In order to remove the lid, basically this lid has a rubber hinge of sorts in here. And you want to remove, I believe it's two screws that are attaching it to the door panel. And there is another screw attaching it to the door card. Once you remove those three screws, then this end will be free. The front end of the door pocket lid has a pin engaging into the door handle. And at that point, you can lift it off and set it aside. Next, to remove your door pocket itself, you've already removed this screw back here. There are, I believe, three more screws on the bottom edge here. There is, might be some missing ones here, but there's one here, another one there, and another one here. Three screws along the bottom edge. Remove those. And then there is one final screw at the very front of the door pocket against the door jam. being held in with this little rubber block that is kind of a bracket of sorts. This block has a screw going into the door pocket and another screw going into the door panel. So when you remove the screw holding it to the door pocket, the one at the back and the three at the bottom, now you should be able to free the door pocket and uh, remove it and set it aside. So now we've removed top trim door pocket lid, door pocket itself. If this was a driver's door, you would remove the two power window switches for driver and passenger. The way to do that, get a plastic trim tool, get behind this plastic bezel, pop it off, and you can pull the switch out and there are five wires behind it with individual spade connectors or terminals. You can disconnect those set the switches aside. If you have, I have aftermarket speakers in here, so I'm not really gonna get too, too much into this. Um, there should be a way to remove the tweeters by just popping them off. The speaker, now that you have the door pocket off, you should be able to remove four screws, um, remove the speaker out, disconnect the terminals from the back, set the speaker aside. Then you can come over here to the door lock mechanism and using a very thin flat blade screwdriver, get under here and pop off this little plastic cap. Once you remove the plastic cap, there is a Phillips screw in there under the screw or remove the screw rather. And then you can remove the door lock knob and the bezel itself that will come off. The last item on the door will be this door handle. And after you remove the top trim, you will see that there, and I'll show you this on the driver door. After you remove the, the top, the top trim, there are two, two bolts holding the handle at the top. And there are also two bolts holding the handle at the bottom, but they're behind the um, this uh, door handle here. The way to remove the door or to get access to the lower bolts is that there is a little rod in there that holds, when you pull on the door handle, when you pull on this handle here, that connects, that rod connects to the, the um, latch mechanism of the door. You can get a flat blade screwdriver in here, pull up on it and it unhooks from the door or it unhooks from this handle rather. Now you can swing, swing this all the way out and then you have two more 
screws in or bolts rather in here. So two on top, two on the bottom. Remove those and now this comes off. Now at that point, you should have a bare, bare door card. Then you should be able to get your uh, typical plastic trim removal tools uh, behind here and pop off the individual snaps holding the door card into the metal door um, frame itself. Just go around, pop, 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 pop all the way around and then you should be able to now remove the door panel or door card from the um, inner door uh, structure itself. Then you want to be careful if you haven't, you know, if you have speakers in here and you haven't removed them from the outside, you want to be very careful while you remove the door card because you will may need to reach behind it and disconnect the wires. Um, but at that point, once you've done that, you should be able to set the door card aside completely and you'll have a door that looks just like the driver, driver one over there, nice and bare. Now before diving into the actual removal process of the regulator and motor, I'm going to give you a warning that if your car is high mileage and or has not been taken care of very well, you may find uh, you may uncover a Pandora's box in here of all sorts of other projects and things that need to be done. For example, this car has 200,000 miles on it and at one point it had an aftermarket alarm system installed. So I had a uh, door lock popper that was installed in here in parallel. There's a bunch of extra holes in the, in the door skin itself. There was extra wiring all over the place here. Um, my speaker wiring is kind of a mess. Uh, I've got this big giant gaping hole that was cut out of the door skin to put the tweeter right here. Also, you'll run into other things like this. Um, this door stay may um, uh, may be broken, so the door may swing out on its own. It'll it, it may not stay, you know, in the exact position you leave the door in. Uh, this one was, was just replaced. You may have switch um, issues. Um, I had to patch up some wiring back back in here uh, because the aftermarket alarm system that was in here had, um, I think, an automatic uh, windows up or windows uh, down um, system. These are all just different, different things that can occur um, in here. And actually, before I forget, when I took my door panel off, I did not have the plastic sheet, the vapor barrier that normally goes in here. Um, that, if you've never had a door panel off, that vapor barrier is designed to protect your door card from any moisture that collects inside the door. Uh, for example, rain that falls down the window and makes it in between the door seals into the, the door cavity itself. Mine did not have this. Um, plastic sheet in there. So what ended up happening is that it got my door card super soggy. It has stains along the bottom and it was all bowed and messed up and it needs a lot of uh, repair uh, before I can put it back in. Um, so again, like I said earlier, just a warning that if you remove your door panel and your car has kind of a spotty history, you may encounter a lot of problems that um, need should be fixed before you put your door back together. Now, moving on to the actual repair. When you remove the regulator and motor, the door glass will now be hanging freely. So make sure that you tape it to the top of the door frame with lots of tape. That way it doesn't slide down and break at the bottom of the door channel. These two bolts near the back of the door and these four bolts, two here and two over here under the switches, hold the motor and the remainder of the regulator to the door frame itself. Remove those and now you should be able to manipulate the motor and regulator out through this bottom cavity. Okay, so I just ran into a little trouble here. I just removed these two screws uh, 
I removed these two up here, no issue. This one, and this is really weird. I've got a very um, oblong hole here. I'm not sure what's going on here. But then this guy, um, I can't get this bolt out because the threaded cylindrical post behind it is turning. So I need to somehow get in there, grab it with some pliers of some kind, and then be able to um, take the screw out. Here's a closer look. Since I've got this giant cutout hole in my door, I can show you from the back what, what's happening. So uh, yeah, I'm not sure if this is a typical problem, but just something to watch out for. Okay, I was able to get some some channel locks back here between the uh, in the gap between the the back side of this door skin and the regulator mechanism. You can see my channel locks right here, and then I was able to grip the cylindrical um, standoff and then um, remove the screw, and then uh, things started falling out. This this piece fell out. Not sure what's going on here just yet, but um, let's keep uh, taking things out and see what happens here. We've got, uh... oh yeah, stuff is loose in here. Again, make sure your window is taped so that nothing falls out here. And then we will try to maneuver this thing to, to get it out somehow. Before taking the regulator out, you have to remove the motor from the regulator mechanism. Here's the motor here. I'm reaching in through the the speaker hole here on the bottom. And if you pick it, pick the mechanism up, there are three bolts right there. So you have to remove those three bolts, uh, set the motor down, and then you can work the regulator um, out through this larger hole um, here on the bottom of the door. Also, apparently, I don't know if this is the case yet, we'll find out in a few seconds, but when you remove the motor from the regulator, you're supposed to be careful because the spring could snap or you know un unwind or unload and uh, it could cause damage to the, uh, the window glass. So uh, you gotta be careful during this step. So after removing the three bolts, the uh, motor came off of the regulator with no issue. I didn't experience any spring snapping of any kind, which um, is probably due to my spring having already um, not been working properly since we established that the the tab, the end of the spring was uh, loose and was flopping around due to that, that little forked um, metallic piece not being where it was supposed to be. But here's the motor. You can retrieve it from the bottom of the door cavity here, disconnect it, um, and set it aside if you want to uh, bench test it later or if you're going to go ahead and replace it due to it being a failed motor. After you take the motor out, this um, regulator channel that is attached to the bottom edge of the door glass um, has, a, has this regulator arm and a roller. So you want to manipulate the entire mechanism in the door and get this arm to roll that way so you can unhook the roller out of this upper channel. And now, now it is free. Then do the same thing with the second one. Just push it, push it, push it until it's free. And now I believe the glass is now floating. So, as I've mentioned multiple times, make sure your glass is taped to the frame <laughs> so that it doesn't uh, slam down and uh, break. So here is the whole regulator now. I was able to get it out more or less in this orientation. I kind of just uh, freed was able to get this end out of here first. We pulled it out and then and then the rest of this came off. Now let's uh, clean it up and see what we got going on here. 
but you can see here's my spring that is not supposed to be there. I think this end is supposed to be maybe over here. So it's supposed to be under considerable tension, uh, which is why it didn't snap back. But uh, yeah, let's see what we got. I shoved some scraps of wood in the door just so that um, if the tape fails, the uh, window won't get very far. Maybe it'll just land here and that's it. Um, your choice or not, um, but uh, yeah, one way to, to take care of it. Or you can use stronger tape, up to you. Here's my quick uh, assessment of the kinematics of this thing. So if you picture this, this is a driver's side regulator. This is the front of the car, back of the car, window is up there. This plate is fixed in the door. Remember, these are the two bolts we removed near the back. These four bolts hold this plate on. So this plate and this plate are fixed against the door. The motor is bolted against this plate. And these two, there's a roller here that rides in this fixed plate. These two rollers ride in the upper channel that's at the bottom of the, the window. And what happens here is when you hit your window switch, the motor gear turns, causes this larger uh, toothed um, semi-gear or whatever you want to call it to rotate, and then which then causes this arm to simply slide back and forth along this channel, and it causes these two arms to um, scissor back and forth and push the window up or down. And that's that's all uh, this mechanism does. I think we've got some serious problems here. This is the OE Porsche unit. I'm going to take the motor off, bench test it later. It's probably still okay. Um, my window didn't stop functioning until very recently when I started messing around with the window switches. But look at the rest of this mechanism. It's, it's in really bad shape. This little um, spring retainer thing was, um, it looks like it was uh, kind of just swedged on there or press fit or, or staked initially and the force of the motor just yanked it out at some point. Um, but uh, yeah, there's no easy way to put this back on. Also, there's the standoff that, this one's all wiggly. This one turns a little bit too. I think these are also just kind of uh, riveted on or something from the back. Um, I don't know if this is normal, but they're not straight. They're at an angle. This may be okay. I'm not, I'm not quite sure, but the reason I point this out is because this surface of the plate is not flat. This, let's see if I can show this to you, but this slot is not a slot anymore. It's flat down here, and then it kind of does this like wavy distorted thing here. So yeah, something, something happened, and I think the motor tweaked this entire um, plate. So, lastly, these rollers are, they're just plastic rollers and they're, they're in really bad shape too. My entire window rattled as you went down the road because my suspension is a little, uh, a little rough, but all this stuff is in, is in kind of bad shape. So, I have a feeling I'm going to have to replace it with a new one or source a good low mile used one.
Still works. So it's been a few weeks and I've got a slight change of plans. A brand new regulator is I think about 600 bucks the last time I checked. And um, I am on a bit of a budget at the moment because I'm in the middle of remodeling. So um, what I'm going to do now is try to fix this unit as best I can just to get the car back on the road and um, you know replace it with a new unit at a later date. So I'm going to try to fix the problems that I had described earlier on this unit. And here's my, my plan of action. This, this little travel stop here, as you can see, it is, the bracket is a little bit tweaked. I guess at some point, this metal edge, instead of hitting right on the edge of the stop here, it decided to slide up, causing to causing this, the plate and this bracket to eventually bend down. So I'm going to file this flat so that it has a, a flat edge to sit on, remove this bolt and try to make this surface flat again like this one, either squeezing it on a vise or tapping it with a hammer back into place. These two posts that mount to the door, they currently, they are not going to fall off, but they do spin a little bit, which makes um, putting the screws in and tightening them a little bit hard. So I'm going to clean these surfaces up on both sides, scuff them up a little bit and add a bead of epoxy simply to keep this thing from turning while I torque the, the bolts when I mount it back on the door. This missing post here, what I'm going to do is use a, let's see how does this thing go? It goes like that. What I'm going to do is, I think, I think this goes like this. Anyway, what I'm going to do is I, I found in my hardware stash a tiny carriage bolt that has this square shoulder on the inside, and it actually is a perfect fit for this slot. The size of this bolt is a M6 by 0.75 thread pitch um, by 15 millimeters long. You could probably use a quarter 20. Um, carriage bolt that you could find at any any hardware store. I just happen to have these laying around. I don't know why. Maybe leftover parts from uh, some earlier purchase. But I'm going to use this carriage bolt because it has a very low profile head. And as you can see, in this area where it's supposed to go, there is a a recess on the back side. So. When I put the bolt in, it should have the the bolt head should stick up very little, and it needs to be a low profile head because there's very little room between um, where the bolt head is going to stick out and the bottom of this this geared plate. So, if you use a for example a quarter twenty hex bolt, you would need to grind the head down to allow it to clear. But I think I can get this guy, put it in here, and now it won't turn because it's got the square shoulder on it. Then I'll put a washer, a couple of hex nuts on here, and then I can take this spring, uh, wind it to the position that it needs to be in, and it should rest against the, um, the bolt and the nuts. So let's see, that takes care of the bend, these two posts, and this. I'll give the rest of the unit a good cleaning. I don't like how loose these rollers are. 
I'm sure they can change they contribute to window rattling but at the moment they are complete um, they're fairly solid they're not in danger of they're not crumbling into dust or anything so I'm gonna go ahead and try to save this unit and we'll put it back in the car see how, how it works Probably just tap it flat. Okay. Now it touches where it's supposed to, right on the top surface instead of on the on this inner area that has been sort of sliced off. Now doesn't sand very well it's kind of like a kind of a rubbery plastic material but it's getting there the idea was just to give give this edge this edge on this side a flat surface to sit on rather than sliding off and tweaking the bracket again That's fairly flat. Good enough. It's exactly where it needs to. Okay, clean this uh, part up for epoxy bonding. Progress so far. So I flattened out the surface. You can still see it's slightly bowed in the reflection, but it's much, much better than it was before. It's uh, basically flat now. And now 
that flat part of the quarter circle touches the, um, the stop right where it should on that flat surface after I gave it a light sanding. And then I came back and added the carriage bolt under here with a washer and two, two nuts. This nut, this first nut is tightened down by hand and then the second nut is tightened against the first one um, as a kind of a lock nut or they're, they're tightened against each other, if you will. Then I took some epoxy, some of this, um, I had some of this laying around. You can use like some of the two part JB weld or something. I, I, for some reason had some of this around. That's like the, the doughy epoxy that you smash together with your hands to mix it up and then you apply it wherever and, uh, and then it, it hardens. And this stuff, I don't know how many years old it is. It's pretty old, but it seems to have worked. And now these things don't spin, so should be easier to uh, install now. I epoxy the, uh, the top and the bottom. Uh, but before I did that, I also abraded the um, corners and uh, with like a small file. And then I cleaned the surfaces with alcohol before putting the epoxy on. And now all we need to do is get the spring installed back on here and wound so that this tab is laying against the, uh, the stop here in the correct orientation. So if we put this back in the up position, Pick it up, pick it up, pick it up. And now, now we'll have to take this tab. Well, in this position, I will clamp this on the vise and then I will hold, probably put some gloves on and safety glasses, hold this down and then with some vice grips, grab this and somehow pull it back over here and slide it behind here. Winding springs is always a little scary. Let's see which one of these work. straightforward. Okay. Yep, that's not going anywhere. Looks like the vice grip worked. And the regular bench press too. Here's another way to visualize the operation of the spring and how it helps the window roll back up. 
If you can visualize, I'm turning the horizon here. Imagine this is horizontal, right? Horizontal, window up. Now, when you roll the window down, the motor turns. If you look at the arm, the arm on the left of the screen is, is going down. The glass is now going down and the spring is uh, having tension applied to it. So now there's stored energy in the spring. When the window is traveling in the up direction, the motor is now turning this gear. The spring is unwinding, helping the motor. And now the arm is going back to the up position. Window down, arms going down on the left, window up, and the arm going up. That's it. This is ready to go back in the car. So I'm going to pull this plate down and zip tie the plate to this gear um, so that this is uh, much more uh, compact and I'm not fighting the, uh, the spring because once it's open then it's in the it, it becomes very difficult to maneuver inside the door so this is its most compact position and now I'm going to try to manipulate it in here get it on the tracks and get it bolted down I'm attaching the upper arm with the upper roller loop, uh, slipping it in from this side of the window track and ro rotating and sliding it that way in order to then be able to attach the second one Come on. like that. Now they're both on top of the door. Now, this roller goes on this track here, so I think I need to bolt this guy on next. I'm going to see if I can start down here, put it on the roller this way, I believe it bolts here, right there. I'm going to bolt this down and see if that helps us keep stuff in um, alignment. thing is there's so many moving parts here that you have to try to figure out what what to put in first, what to align first, what to fix, what to make static first before you uh, can unload that spring. here. Let's put this track here. Come on. OK. 
Okay. All right, that's not tight, just uh, in there so it won't fall out. Now, theoretically, the window should not, the rollers should not fall out of any of the tracks. Okay, I think at this point, if I can get to it, I'm gonna cut that zip tie. Now the plate's gonna spin up in the position where I want to bolt it down. So, where's my zip tie? It's a little buried, but it's in there. I can get to it. So now the plate went boom back up here because that's what the spring wants to make it do. So we're gonna see it up here. Now, um, the studs roughly align in this orientation. Two threaded posts here, two over here. So I think at this point, I'm going to try to bolt the motor to the back of the plate. On my car, there's a blue and a blue black wire. The blue black wire is the one closest, connects to the terminal closest to this gear. So, motor bolts back to the plate like this. There are one, two, three bolts that go on the plate. You can barely see the holes here. Well, here's one, and then there's another one, and a third one here. Um, my car has this big cutout here. I don't know what for a, it's for a tweeter, but um, I don't know what an uncut door looks like, if there is actually a smaller hole in here that would still allow you to access the bolts. Um, if that hole is there, then you know basically do whatever you need to do to get access through any of these openings to move this around and get the motor behind the plate and be able to put in the screws and tighten them from this side of the door through whichever opening you find most convenient by kind of moving the plate around. Also, as I had mentioned earlier, um, at this point when you bolt the motor down, you're gonna mesh the gear going to mesh the gears together and now the window can't um, uh, uh, the, the gear won't turn so I'm gonna have to untape the door and slide the door down slide the window down using the rollers to get the plate up where it needs to go this is kind of an awkward process Okay, motor is on the plate. Now, everything's sort of stuck. The rollers are still in the tracks. Motor is hanging up here because the spring, well, the spring and the gear are now, the gear is now fixed. Big gear, the motor gear and I taped up my window. So I think if I untape the window, I should be able to manipulate these and get the plate to line up. So let's see what happens. What 
a mess with this tape. So, aha. Oh, this is gonna be, wow, do I need to cycle the motor? I think I need to cycle the motor to go Well, I have switches. Man. Down, 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 down. Yeah. So now with the motor bolted up to the back of the plate, the rollers in both upper and lower tracks and the window in the somewhat upright position in order to get this plate down to down to the correct in order to get the plate to come down and match up to the holes in the door i'm going to operate my switch and uh, see if that moves it down with the power of the motor. Ooh. Come on. All right. Okay, I'm gonna check it out. Keep jogging it un until the holes line up. So close. Beautiful, finally. Now I've got all four lined up. The glass is still in the kind of highest position and I'm holding this, I'm holding up the glass by holding one of the arms of the rollers. But now I can, I can see all four, all four holes, uh, threaded holes lining up with the holes in the door so I'm gonna thread those in real quick actually what I'm gonna do instead is um, hold up the glass another alternative to the tape and use this at your own risk is you can grab one of these uh, woodworking clamps with the rubber with the soft rubber grips Make sure they're clean, that there's no um, hard debris on it that could scratch your glass. And ever so gently, ever so gently clamp it to the bottom of the door. Just to where the rubber is uh, just barely touching the glass. Do not put pressure on it because you don't want to crack the glass. The glass is not flat. But now, will hold itself up. Now I can concentrate on bolting these guys down over here. Turn my key off. Some loose on both sides. Let's get the other two in here. Uh, I gotta push up, push way up on this regulator assembly to get these guys to line up, but I'm happy to say that all four are lining up well. It's such a tricky assembly because you can't get to the motor bolts after the um, after it's been bolted in. So in theory, you should be able to put the rollers in each track, fight the spring a little bit, 
get the plate bolted to the door and then put the motor on, but there are no external holes here. I wish there were three holes, one, two, three, so that I can install the motor independent of the regulator, but for some reason that's not a possibility here. Okay, as I said before, the motor is torqued down. The lower track is torqued down. So now we should be able to there should be some uh, adjustment that we can do here after to do the actually there's two adjustments there's a up and down adjustment and a parallel parallelism adjustment uh, in the door but first let's see if we can operate it and get it to move up and down here we go moment of truth Okay, here we go. Ooh. I have a switch issue because it uh, it wants to go in one direction but not the other. But I know it's the switch because if I, for example, watch this, goes down easily, doesn't really want to come back up. I think I've got a contact issue in here. But if I switch the polarity. of the middle terminals, watch what happens. See? So, and here it doesn't want to go down. So, this switch is bad. I need to replace it, but the regulator is doing what we want it to do. Thank goodness. Here is an actual shot of the woodworking clamp that I use to gently clamp on the glass. Um, it just has a throat large enough to fit over the frame of the window like this so that the rubber sits entirely on the glass. And again, I used, I made sure that these had clean rubber um, pads on them, no uh, debris that could potentially scratch the window. And I literally applied almost no pressure. I literally just went like this, apply just slight finger pressure enough to, like this, just enough finger pressure to get it to get the two rubber surfaces to touch the glass and that's all you need to do to keep the, the glass from falling down. If you squeeze any harder, you run the risk of cracking the glass. So be very careful, do this at your own risk. Um, otherwise, just stick with the um, taping solution. So how to adjust your window glass once you've got the regulator back in. The window has two adjustments. There's a par parallelism adjustment that controls how parallel the glass runs in relation to the channels um, so that it doesn't run. 
this way or that way, but rather along the same direction of both channels. And there is also a height adjustment that controls how far up the end of the glass will reach. The lower channel that we installed that the, the regulator lower roller goes into should have two, uh, two mounting uh, holes. The one in the front is a round hole. The one in the back is a slot. And you can, if, you if your glass is moving this way or that way and it's not uh, following the channels perfectly, you can loosen the back bolt and move, move it up or down the slot to get it where you need to go. Uh, and then operate the regulator up and down until it does what it's supposed to do. Now, to adjust the height of the glass, it's less critical on the coops because the coops have um, this closed window frame at the very top, but this is more critical on the uh, Targas and the Cabriolets that have an open um, glass edge and no window frame on top. The coupe and the Targa, I'm sorry, the Targa and the Cabriolet will have a slotted adjustment in here. Actually, this slot may be the one that is used on there. I'm not 100% sure, but they'll have a bolt in this um, accessible through this door slot and they'll have a slotted adjustment. So you can undo the bolt and move it to where um, it needs to go. And then you cycle the window up and down so that you can get the glass height to set at the exact position you want it to so that it clears the target top or the convertible top. On the coupes, um, you don't have much of an adjustment. If you recall, the, um, the plastic uh, block that I sanded down um, is actually the um, the end stop for the that limits the travel of the regulator and also the um, end of the uh, glass as well. So in sanding the rubber block, I actually may have um, caused, I have possibly made this block shorter, causing the glass itself hitting the top of the frame to be the, uh, the limit stop. Um, I did check the PET and actually you can buy the, there's a part number for the rubber block by itself. So I may go back and buy a new rubber block and I can get in here, put my hand behind here to grab the, um, the metal bracket that it sit, sits into, undo this bolt, take it out and replace the rubber block with a new one so that the regulator hits the end of the rubber block before the glass touches the top of the frame. This adjustment isn't super critical for me because as soon as the glass rolls to the top of the window and stops, I let go of the switch. So um, that's that's okay for for now. But those are really the two, the only two adjustments that you are able to do on the uh, window regulator. So I was finally able to source a brand new window switch uh, to replace the defective one that was giving me problems here. So let's test out our regulator and uh, see how it runs. Looks like a job well done. Once you've verified the function, the only thing left to do is to go ahead and lubricate the all the moving points um, so that it can operate smoothly. You can move the window up and down and get in here and lubricate both of the channels and all of the moving parts. So that's about it for the window regulator installation. Um, at this point, if you want to reassemble your door uh, panel and the internals back onto the, the door itself, please follow the disassembly steps uh, in the reverse order that I showed at the beginning of the video. I hate doing the reassembly is the reverse of disassembly, 
uh, statement that most service manuals do, but in this case, I have a ton more work to do uh, inside this door before I can put it back together. So I won't be showing that at the end of this video. But thank you so much for watching. If this helped you in any way, please like and subscribe. And um, I will see you, I hope to see you next time on the uh, next repair video. Thank you.